Hey, my name is Shaw St. Louis, and I'm the fitness coach here at Cox Fitness Centers. Today, I am going to be talking about sleep awareness as March is National Sleep Awareness Month. So we're going to talk about ways that you can get a better quality and quantity of sleep and just what a good sleep and how to get it um, means to our overall uh, health and wellness. So I'm going to share my screen at this moment and we're going to get into this. All righty. So. Okay, so March is Sleep Awareness Month, and it gives us an opportunity to look at our own sleep habits and search for ways to improve on the quantity and quality of sleep that we get. Eating and exercise are used to maintain a good health, but sleep can also affect our overall wellness. So we're going to talk about the importance of sleep stages, why sleep is important to our health, benefits of getting seven hours of sleep, effects of sleep deprivation, tips for a better night's sleep, mindfulness and relaxation, and lights out. Okay, so why is sleep important to my health? Um, sleep is our superpower, as said by Dr. Matthew Walker, who is the founder and director of the Center for Human Sleep, UC Berkeley. Um, this is an excellent TED Talk if you would like to find out more information about what all entails, how to, um, he gets into it a little bit deeper, but it is a fantastic TED Talk uh, just to support what we're gonna learn about today. So the answer to why is sleep important has a lot to do with brain maintenance and repair. When a person suffers from insomnia, their bodies produce more stress hormones and fewer growth hormones. So basically this leads to cellular aging. As growth hormones are necessary for the replacement of cells, collagen fibers, bone, muscle, hair, skin, and et cetera. So it's believed that infants sleep more because their bodies are in a state of constant growth. So let's talk about the importance of the different sleep stages. So during our REM sleep, which makes up about 20 to 25% of our sleep, this is where our memory um, is affected our memory consolidation. It increases creativity. It regulates our mood. Um, and then we get into our light sleep, which makes up about 45 to 55 percent of our sleep. And this is where our metabolism is regulated. Our emotions um, is processed and it pro the processing of our memory. And then our deep sleep, which makes up about 15 to 25% of our sleep. This is where our muscles get regenerated, our brain detoxifies, and our blood sugar is balanced. Okay, so how much sleep do we really need? Well, the CDC recommends that adults 60, 18 to 60 should get at least seven hours per night. Um, they asked Elon Musk, who we all know is, um, you know, the brain behind Alexa, Tesla, and all of that. They asked him how much sleep he gets per night, and he said boldly eight hours. So sleep is super important. Um, even people at that level still get and realize the importance of sleep. So between 61 and 64 years of age, we need seven to nine hours, and then 65 and up, we need uh, seven to eight hours of sleep. So what are the top benefits of getting this, at least the seven hours of sleep? Well, sleep strengthens our immune system and heals and repairs our heart and blood vessels. Um, it cleans and detoxifies our brains. Of, um, and then it regulates our mood and emotions. Uh, it increases our productivity and concentration and helps with information processing and memorization. It also plays a critical role in personal safety, just being aware and alert. Um, it helps with better performance, energy and coordination. 
uh, it lowers our risk of heart disease. So according to the CDC, getting adequate rest each night allows the body's blood pressure to regulate itself. And it also helps maintain your ability to live a healthy lifestyle. So let's look at the opposite. What are the effects of sleep deprivation? So it is the opposite. So it lowers your immunity. Lack of sleep disrupts your body's immune defenses. Um, it can cause high blood pressure because your body is not regulating, getting the time to regulate the pressure, um, the blood pressure that moves through your body. Um, it can cause weight gain. It increases by increasing our hunger and appetite. Um, it causes mood instability and poor brain function. It lowers our alertness and concentration. So in a world that's constantly on the go, your body and mind does need a chance to rest and recharge. Let's talk about uh, healthy sleep positions. So sleeping on your side or back is considered more beneficial because both of these positions make it easier to keep your back and spine balanced and supported, which relieves pressure on the spine and allows your muscles to recover and relax. Apparently, the worst sleep position is on your stomach, um, which does not allow you to maintain a neutral spine, puts pressure on your joints and muscles, and has your head in an incorrect position, which can lead to aches and pains. Let's talk about some ways to get a better night's sleep. So I think one of the things that I learned from this is just I needed to create a sleep routine. I think that if you can create a routine, it's easier to stick to something. So some things that can help with this is think of it a winding down activity that you enjoy. Um, it could be drinking warm herbal tea, reading a book, um, a boring book, nothing that's too exciting because that'll stimulate your brain. Um, lighting some or burning some essential oils like lavender, that's one of them that induce, helps induce sleep. And light stretching. Um, another idea is having a great a gratitude book by your bedside where you just write down things that you are grateful for um, that may have happened to you throughout the day and just kind of induce that positivity, that positive vibes around you. Um, and another thing that they recommend is to take a warm shower or bath. Experts say that this can improve your quality and quantity of sleep at nighttime. To continue, we also wanna avoid doom scrolling. So that includes anything that potentially increases stress, worry, strong emotions, which is usually, you know, our emails, social media, um, watching the news before you go to bed. It's try to, it's best to try to avoid, uh, you know, screens at all costs at this time of the day. Um, try to prepare your sleep space, make it, you know, relaxing and comfortable, whatever that means to you. Try to only use your bed for sleeping. So, you know, I know a lot of us have TVs in our room, but it's recommended that we do not watch TV in our rooms or play video games or eat um, or anything else that is stimulating you. Try to do that outside of the bedroom as far as even reading certain books um, may be too exciting and stimulate your brain and you find yourself three hours later still reading the book instead of sleeping. Um, when it comes to food, try and eat your last meal at least three hours before bedtime so that your body can shift into its sleep cycle. When we eat or drink too close to our bedtimes, it gives our body something else to do instead of focusing on snoozing. Uh, so when it comes to alcohol, a glass of wine may help you get to bed, but it definitely disrupts your REM cycle, which we talked about earlier. The more time between your bed and your bedtime and your drinks, the better. So at least a minimum of three hours so that you get that nice, undisrupted sleep, okay? 
And then relaxation takes time. Um, practice makes perfect. It doesn't come automatically. So you want to give yourself time to learn your sleep routine. Let's talk about mindfulness and relaxation ideas. This will also support your sleep routine. Again, remember, give yourself time to learn how to relax your mind. You may have a super stressful, you know, job or just day, and it, it takes time to, to learn how to switch off and switch out of that. So the aim of mindfulness is to take charge of your busy mind and move it from worrying into a more relaxed state. So what, like we said earlier, you want to say goodbye to your devices. So you want to eliminate distractions by moving all of your, vice, your devices that em emit that blue light, laptops, phones, um, even your Kindles. That light affects your brain by increasing alertness and decreasing sleep-inducing melatonin. So put them in your drawer. You know, even if it's in your room, put it in your drawer, close your drawer beside your bed, and um, get those away from you. You want to also learn to focus on your breathing. This is another tip that can help you relax um, by inhaling through your nose, focusing on that breath coming in and then exhaling it. I even have heard that, you know, you can think about breathing in positive thoughts and exhaling the worries of your past day. And as you breathe and bring that fresh breath into your body, it also promotes relaxation and allows your body to know that, okay, it's time for me to just let go and relax and recharge. Another thing that uh, is very helpful is taking a mental body scan. So you try to relax every area of your body that is intense, that is tensed, and you repeat this until you feel yourself physically relaxing. So you start from your head and you work yourself through each limb and all the way down to your feet. And you may have to do it a few times until you feel yourself completely letting go and relaxing into your mattress or your pillow. Okay. And then another thing that seems to work for me is playing quiet, relaxing sleep sounds like rain or ocean waves. And yes, I do play it through my Alexa and it helps my body know that it's time to get into sleep mode and I'm not hearing every little sound. Some of us have that. I've got super ears, so I hear like everything. And this just kind of helps block out all of the outside noises. And it indicates it's something that I've added to my sleep routine that seems to be super helpful. These are just ideas that you can do when you can't sleep. We talked about practicing breathing. Um, having herbal tea, warm herbal tea, chamomile tea is something that they say induces sleep. Um, so does magnesium and melatonin. Taking a warm Epsom salt bath. Um, we talked about muscle relaxation. Visualizing a peaceful experience, just having something peaceful and positive around you. Um, doing a brain dump, getting up, moving to another room and writing in your, your journal and just emptying out of anything that's bothering you and anything that would be keeping you away from your sleep. Also doing something mundane like folding laundry, something that does not promote a lot of energy or thought um, and moving to another room and listening to soothing mu music. So I think what, they're, what the consensus is, is that if you can't sleep, don't lay in your bed fighting it, get up, and move to another room and do something until you feel sleepy and then go to your room, your bed and sleep. Again, remember to allow yourself time to get used to your new routine or whatever it is that you're doing to help you um, get a better sleep at night. Lights out, all right. So what are things that you can do, more things that you can do um, in your room, and before bedtime, that can also help you sleep. So dimmable lights are, is an idea to keep your room um, uh, dark. Uh, blackout shades or curtains do help as well. Um, the sleep mask is helpful. Keeping your room temperature cool around 65 degrees. They say that when your body is in a cool 
um, state that it sleeps deeper and longer. And try to limit your caffeine intake. Um, try not to have caffeine after 3 p.m. for the day. So that 3 p.m. when you start to feel sluggish, either get a, a, a walk outside, a walk and have an apple. There's a lot of other things that we can do to give us a little bit of energy, maybe do some light stretching. Um, try not to nap in the day. This is something that experts say actually negatively affects our night sleep. Uh, exercise daily. This is important. It gets the stresses out, but make sure it's at least four hours before your bedtime. So lunchtime is a great time if you can break away to work out in the mornings. Remember, you're trying to create a routine that you can stick to and that promotes your overall wellness. Another thing experts say is wake up at the same time, even on the weekends, and go to bed at the same time as much as possible so that your body doesn't have to restart its routine and it knows that, oh, it's 10 o'clock, got to go to bed. And here are some sleep mantras. You can come up with your own. I just wrote three down to kind of give you an idea of where I was going with this. So some things that you can say in your bed before you, as you're part of your sleep routine is it can wait until the morning. Another one is, I worked hard today. I deserve this rest. And lastly, I will have good dreams. Again, you can you know, come up with your own sleep mantras, but this is something that you can add to your sleep routine. And don't be like Garfield. <laughs> I'd like mornings better if they started later. I'm sure we've all said this. I hope you guys got a good information from this. And most of all, I hope you sleep well tonight. Thank you.